She had on a blue dress with a blue and white plaid collar, black shoes and white socks. She had little blue ribbons in her hair. Every now and then, the child just wanders off, Sheriff. I wouldn't worry too much about her, Mrs. Crawford. Children sometimes have a way of doing that. I scolded her this morning before she left for school. She'd stop to water the flowers. My grandchild loves flowers. She's always watering the flowers. I scolded her because I was afraid she'd be late. It's Carolyn. She's lost again. We've looked everywhere. Martha, you shouldn't have called me away from work again. But I'm worried, Ralph. She didn't come home for lunch, and I went up to the school, and the teacher said that Carolyn didn't get to school this morning. Martha, I can't leave my job every time Carolyn is lost for a few hours. It was hard enough to get a good job in this town, and I don't want to lose it. But she's never been gone this long before. I scolded her this morning. And... All right, all right, honey. She's been scolded before. She'll be home soon. We'll find her, Mrs. Crawford. The town isn't so big that Carolyn could stay lost for very long. I'll need this picture. I'll have my boys keep an eye out for her. If she turns up, give me a ring. Thanks, Sheriff. She's so little. So helpless. If I only knew she was all right. Come on, Ralph. Let's go out and have another look. And this time, Dad, don't try to stop me from giving her a spanking. I'm going to teach her never to do this to us again. Anything doing, Ben? Not much. She'd lost. Want to take this stand? Carolyn Crawford, Negro, age five, wearing blue dress, plaid collar, last seen about 9.15 this morning leaving for school. Sheriff's office, McClure speaking. Pass that on to the boys. Tell them to keep an eye out for her. For you, Ben. Better check with the hospital, Mickey, just to make sure. Right. Hello. Oh, hello, Miss Peterson. All units. Attention, all units. I'll be right over. Child lost. Carolyn Crawford, age five, Negro, last seen about 9.15 this morning, leaving for school, wearing blue dress, plaid collar. Are you sure you saw a man talk to Carolyn this morning? Yes, sir. When was this, Peter? When we were walking to school. He didn't see the man. I saw him. I did so. Do you remember where this was you saw the man talking to Carolyn? By the flower shop. Mr. Woody's flower shop. Every morning she stops to look at the flowers. Peter, can you tell me what this man looked like? He was a big man. Almost as big as you. He was very old, about 200 years old. He was not. He was real fat with a great big head. He looked like Uncle Twiggy. That's right. He was Uncle Twiggy. A character out of one of our storybooks. All right, children, that's enough. Now go out to the yard and play. <laughs> When Mrs. Crawford came to see me, I saw no particular cause for alarm because Carolyn has wandered away before. But then I got to thinking and I questioned the children. Of course, I'm not sure that it's not their imagination, but I thought you ought to know. Well, I doubt if there's anything to it, but I'll check on it anyway. Oh, I hope so. Carolyn's such a shy, sensitive child. She could be frightened so easily. Thank you for calling me, Miss Peterson. Oh, uh... I wouldn't mention this to anybody. I mean about the man. I understand, Mr. Kellogg. She was standing right there outside the window looking at the flowers the way she does every morning. Uh, then this fellow walked up and spoke to her. After a minute, he came in and, and, and bought some violets. Then he went out and gave them to her. But uh, I, I didn't pay much attention at the time. You sure you never saw this man before? No, I never saw him before. What did he look like? Well, he was sort of average looking fellow. Uh, I wasn't paying much attention then. Late 30s, uh, early 40s. Sort of a fair complexion. 
brown hair, uh, maybe blonde. Blonde hair? Oh, uh, he wasn't colored. He was a white man. Uh, look, man, I know it sounds kind of stupid, but uh, I can't even remember how he was dressed. I, I'm pretty sure he was wearing a gray suit, a dark gray, but uh, I couldn't swear to it. But you'd remember him if you saw him again? Oh, yes, I'd know him all right. All right. If you can think of anything else, give me a call. Well, he was an average sort of fellow about my height. Uh, you think there's anything to it, Ben? I don't know, Mr. Woody, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk about this to anybody. Don't worry, Ben. I thought you were out delivering Mrs. Wilson's order. I'm making it up now. Oh, Jimmy. Yes, Mr. Woody? You'd better get those flowers over to her right away. She's waiting for them. Yes, sir. right down to Elmer's. Fred, you cover up to the parkway. That leaves from the parkway up to Laurel for you, Al. Woody's description of the guy isn't much to go on, Ben. It's all we've got. Stan, you better put this out on the teletype. Get some more prints made of this and send them right out. Check bars, hotels, movies. Run down any leads you get. But try not to make any fuss about it. We don't want to stir up any unnecessary excitement. I don't know how much there is to all this, but we can't afford to take any chances. But just in case we're going off half cock, Mickey, you and Chet keep looking for the kid. Look any place in this town where a kid might be. Let's get on it, boys. Well, one thing we can be sure about, the guy certainly isn't after ranch. Knock off on that talk, Chet. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Sorry, Ben. Say, Roy, have you seen anything of a guy about 40 years old in a gray suit, a stranger in town? He hasn't been in here, Mickey. Well, let us know if you do, will you? Okay, good. Anything wrong with the food? No, oh, I'm all right. Look at the fish. Hi, Ben. Hello, Casey. That's a very pretty picture you put up, Casey. How could you tell from where you were looking? <laughs> Going to have lunch? Just coffee. Seen any strange men in here today? No stranger than usual. So it's about 40, average height. Brown hair, maybe blonde. Not my type. Medium build, maybe wearing a gray suit. Personally, I go for a sheriff's uniform. You know, with a little encouragement, I close up the place right now. Your water's boiling over. Hi, Jason. Oh, hi, Quake. Hi, Walter. Hi, Quake. Hello, hi, Casey. Hi, hi Ben. Hi. Give me a salad, will you, Casey? Combination. Sure, that's okay. Well, looks like you've got a little trouble on your hands, huh, Ben? Beats me what some fellows will do. I hear it's a white man you're looking for. You got any ideas who it is? What's it all about, Quigley? White man kidnapped a colored girl. Talk going around, he killed her. All right, Quigley, you can drop it. Huh? I said drop it. What's playing, Ben? Yeah, come on, give out. My kid's lost and we're trying to find her, that's all. Why do you have to keep shooting your mouth off, Quigley? Well, you don't have to go into a snit about it, Ben. I, I'm just telling what I heard. Well, you can forget what you heard, all of you. Bad talk, it can cause trouble. Hello? Yeah, just a minute. It's for you, Ben. When does it happen, Ben? I said drop it. Hello? Yes, Dan. Well, keep them there. I'll be right over. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Ben. Huh. You pin a badge on some of these guys that goes right to their head. You think I was causing all this talk? I'm just saying what I heard. It's all over town anyway. 
Seems though this guy picked this kid up just outside of Woody's shop. Too much pepper. <laughs> Side. Any word to the other boys? They've all called in. No news yet. I've heard you're looking for a man, Mr. Kellogg. I want to know from you if it's true. A man was seen with your little girl early this morning. Then it is true. We're still not sure this man has anything to do with Carolyn's disappearance. We've got to find my baby. We've got to find her before something terrible happens to her. I've got all my men on it now. We're doing everything we can as fast as we can. Maybe you haven't found him because he's a white man, Sheriff. Phil! Mr. Gaines is Carol's uncle. You can understand, Sheriff. We're terribly worried about my granddaughter. I realize that. But I also want Mr. Gaines to know that the man's color has nothing to do with it. I know what you're going through, Crawford. And I promise you we're doing everything we possibly can to find your child. What will I tell my wife? This man you're looking for, Sheriff, what's he look like? Maybe we can find him. I think you better let us take care of that, Gaines. Kleinberg. He was this close to me. I could have reached out and touched him. Bert saw the guy with the Crawford kid. I was making my deliveries on Samson Street when I seen this fellow and the little girl. Believe me, he was as far away as, uh, as you are now. What time was this? Well, I got to Samson Street on my ride about 9.30, so this must have been about 9.45, I guess. Maybe a little later, but not much. Now, wait a minute. Hold it, Bert. Now, try to remember everything. Yeah. Can you describe this man? Tell me everything you can. Oh, sure, sure, sure. He was a fellow about uh, medium height, yeah, uh, wore a gray suit, striped, I think. Uh, Medium build, about 140, 50. Brownish hair. Checks with Woody's description. I'm telling you, Ben, he was this close to me. Struck me kind of funny, him holding a little kid by the hand. But I didn't think it was anything like this. And I'd only know. Which way was he going? We crossed Sampson Street and went on towards Townsend. <laughs> like I say, I never dreamt of this. Well, I, I, I could have grabbed him, but I, I, I might have saved that little kid's life. You'd recognize him if you saw him again? He was this close to me. Chet's got something hot. I'm telling you, Mickey, he was that close to me. If I'd only known. Yeah, I know. You could have grabbed him. Yeah. Yes, Chet? I'm at the bus station, Ben. The check room attendant thinks he saw our man get off the bus here this morning. I'll be right down. Why shouldn't I remember him? Only him and two women got off of the bus. All I can get out of it is that his initials are CP, comes from St. Louis. Why are the stations in St. Louis and see if they can help you? Okay. Now, anything else you can remember? Like what? All he did was check his bag. All right, after he checked his bag, which way did he go? Went out the door to the cab stand. How many ways could he go? Did he get into a cab? How could I tell if he got into a cab? I mean, he and the cabs are outside. Okay, that's enough, thanks. Okay, oh, sure. Yeah. If I see him again, should I let you know? Now, uh, what do you think? Addition checks, additional information. Suspects or initials are CP. Arrived on 845 bus from St. Louis. Seen at bus station in the vicinity of taxicab stand, approximately 845 AM. <laughs> Pick the guy up. Tell me what it's all about. I don't want to get anybody into trouble. The little girl, five years old, missing. I took him over to Sam Packard's place. He said something about being in a hurry. Wasn't going to be in town very long. Packard Construction Company. Hey. He 
came here to see Mr. Packard. He seemed disappointed when I told him Mr. Packard was out on a business trip. You want me? Oh. Hello, Kellogg. Hello, Wiley. Mr. Kellogg was just asking about the man who came to see the boss this morning. Packard's nephew? What do you want him for? Packard's nephew? Yeah, what's it all about? Do you know where I can find him? No, he said he was going into town. He'd be back a little later. What time was all this? Pretty early, a little after nine. Why? Packard Construction Company. Just a minute, please. What's it all about, Kellogg? It's for you, Mr. Kellogg. Yes. Yes, Dan. I'll be right in. They got him. Al picked him up at the bus station. He went back for the bag. Sam Packard's nephew. That's great. Better get a hold of Packard right away. That's him. No doubt about it. That's him, all right. Yes, sir. That's the man I saw with Carolyn. Yeah. That's the guy who drove to Packard's office. Yes, that's the man. I'm positive. Thanks, Mr. Woody. Now, what if I did buy her some flowers? What does that prove? I'm no kidnapper. You can't accuse me of this. You haven't been accused of anything yet. Sit down, Packard. Just why did you buy her those flowers? I don't know. She was standing there with her face pressed up against the window. I never thought it would get me into this. And that was the last you saw of her? Yes. You were seen with her after that, Packard. A milkman saw you with her. A milkman saw me? Look, what are you trying to make of this? There was some traffic and I took her across the street. Then I sent her off to school. That's all there was to it. Then why did you lie? You said it was the last time you saw her. I'm not lying about anything. The whole thing's crazy. I bought her some flowers and I helped her across a busy street. That's all I did. Sit down, Packard. Why did you come to town today? Well, I... I hadn't seen my uncle in five years. I was passing through. I thought I'd stop off and pay him a visit. Then why were you leaving without seeing him? I couldn't wait any longer. I wanted to catch the next bus out. Where were you going? Up the new mining project. I'm trying to get a job. What kind of job? I'm a miner. What kind of mines do you work, Packard? Gold, silver, copper. I work all kinds of mines. Where did you go after you left your uncle's office? I don't know. Uh, it was a nice day. I thought I'd see the town. Why didn't you let your uncle know you were coming so you wouldn't miss him? Well, I hadn't planned on seeing him. It was only after the bus stopped here that I got the idea. Whereabouts in town did you spend most of your time? Well, I don't know. I, I just walked around. I don't remember where I spent most of my time. What were you doing up on Sampson Street? I don't even know if I was on Sampson Street. I told you, I don't remember the names of the streets. Look, she walked with me for a couple of blocks. I never saw the kid after that. I had nothing to do with her. You're not going to pin this thing on me. There were witnesses that saw you with that kid. She wasn't seen with anybody else but you. And she's been missing ever since. I've got two bucks, says I'll let him go. Oh, give the guy a break. Maybe he didn't do it. Tell him what kind of a break we'd get if it was one of us. He ain't kidding. Oh, you guys, come on. Give me, give me, give me. It's frightening to think that it could happen in this town. A man who would murder a child must be a maniac. Where is she now? I don't know. How could I know? What was your purpose in buying her the flowers? I didn't have any purpose. I just wanted to buy them for her. What else did you buy her? I didn't buy her anything else. Do you buy flowers for every kid you see? No. Look, will you give me a break? I've got a family. Don't mix me up in anything like this. What do you mean, anything like this? What don't you want to get mixed up in? This kid. It's a terrible thing. How do you know it's terrible? Just how much more do you know that you're not telling us? The authorities are bound to be biased. It's only natural they'll be influenced by race prejudice. I don't think in this case, in this town, race prejudice will influence justice. But this is a unique situation. A white man's accused of a crime against a Negro child. This time, the shoe's on the other foot. Where did you go after you left your uncle's office? I don't remember exactly where I... I just walked around town. Did you walk through the business district? Yes. Did you see the movie theater? Yes. Did you walk as far east as the Jefferson Monument? Oh, no, I walked past the Jefferson Monument. What was playing at the movies? I didn't notice. How many stories high is the hospital? Two, maybe three. I didn't notice. Then you were in the vicinity of the school. The hospital just a few blocks away. Look, I told you I didn't see the school. I don't know whether I was in the vicinity of the school or not. I've told you everything I know. Where's that kid? 
Tell us what you did with her. We're going to keep you here till you do tell. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Leave me alone. I've told you everything I know. If you don't tell us where that kid is, I'll tear you apart. Becky. Lay off. Book him. Sam Packard's outside. I've got a wife and two kids. Keep him in here. Hello, Sam. What are the charges against my nephew? Suspicion of kidnapping. Would you ruin him? He's got a wife and two children. A filthy thing like this can ruin a man. If he's innocent, we'll find it out. And if he's guilty, we'll find that out too. But in the meantime, please don't interfere. But don't you understand? You mustn't even hold him for a thing like this. The stigma, the, the disgrace, he'll never live it down. I know these things aren't very pretty, but I've got a job to do. Then why don't you do your job? Release Packer's nephew before this turns into a real mess. This doesn't concern you, Wiley. You have a white man in there, and that concerns a lot of people in this town. Ben, uh, let me take him out of here now. I can't. But he didn't do it. You know he didn't do it. That's for a court to decide. A court? Ben, if you do that, if you drag him through this muck, I'll pull every trick in the game. I'll throw everything I've got into it. I'll prove it's a frame. That you'll try to make a hero out of yourself by framing an innocent man. You do just as you like, Sam. I want to see him. I'll be right to speak to him. You stay here, Wiley. Hello, Sam. I'd like to speak to him alone. I'll have you out on a writ as soon as I get my lawyer. In the meantime, here's your story. You were with me, you understand? No matter what you've told them, you were with me all the time you were in town. Why should I say that? I'll quash this whole thing. They're not going to make a fuss over that nigger kid. Why should I lie? I've got nothing to lie about. Do as I tell you. You were with me all the time you were in town. I'll swear to it. And even you think I did this dirty, rotten thing. I'm not asking you whether you did it. I've lived in this town for 25 years, and I won't be dragged through this scandal. I won't let you disgrace me. Oh, I see. It doesn't matter whether I'm innocent or not. Doesn't matter what happened to that kid. Just protect the name of Sam Packard from any disgrace. That's all that matters. Don't you talk that way to me. You'll do as I tell you. You'll do it and get out of this town and never show your face again. Get out of here or they'll really have something to hold me for. What do you think, Ben? I don't know, Mickey. Get the boys together. We're to keep on looking for that kid. Packard went down there to get him out. What'd I tell you? Packard's got it all fixed. They're gonna let him go. And they let him go free. It proves my point. You can get away with the murder. As long as you're the right cover. <laughs> What has your nephew done with her? I don't know what you're talking about. Please, Mr. Packard, it's my baby. I've got to know what he's done with my Get baby. Get out of my way. Oh, wait, I've Mr. Got Packard. To know. Take your hands off of me. She's my child, Mr. Packard. You've got to tell me. You've got to. Get out of my way. Mr. Packard, are you all right? Come on, we must get out of here. We better get a doctor. What happened? Some niggers did it. Sam Packard was beaten up. Two of them jumped Sam Packard. Beat him up bad. A whole pack of them attacked this poor old man for no reason at all. Now they're going around town beating up white men. You gotta know how to handle them. You gotta keep them in line. Well, don't think we won't when the time comes. Hi, Chip. All right. When they start beating up white guys, that's the time to do something. Well, Chip didn't exactly fall all over you. He seemed a lot more interested in talking about those niggers. And you told me he was so gone on you. Chip Wiggins, I don't think you even cared that I was just insulted. What are you talking about? Who insulted you? A nigger. Sally and I were walking along Parsons Street. Oh, you mean one of them made a pass at you? Well, what do you expect us to do? After all, we're just a couple of helpless girls. But if you just want to stand around here and yak about it, come on, Sally. Lois, how could you do a thing like that? Are you sure, Tim? Sure. Come on, let's get ourselves first. Nearly 
beat him to death. They beat up Bill Cross on Parsons Street. There were four white boys. And they killed a male on Parsons Street. That's two of them now. <laughs> Yeah, a whole carload of them went after a couple of white boys. They were after a white girl, and those boys were just trying to protect her. They attacked the white girl. I heard she killed herself afterwards. <gasps> like something out there. Come on, Mickey. Okay, let's go. Wait a minute, Mickey. The kid likes flowers. No flowers around here, Ben. Let's have a look anyway. Okay. Fast. Sam Packett was beaten up by a couple of colored guys. You keep on looking. Fights are breaking out all over town. It could mean real trouble. Mickey, you better come back too. Okay. years old, and this guy jumped him. Mayor Borden. How many of them were there? Sheriff Kellogg. Five or six? From the looks of him, they must have put up some battle. How old are you, sir? Mayor Borden. Eighteen. Oh, okay, Ben. Take him over to the hospital. Wait a minute. You take him over. 
You cover the desk. But Ben, you got me all wrong. Come on, son. Hello. Ben, where the devil have you been? I've got a citizens committee in my office. Get over here right away. I'll be right over, Jim. Take him over to the county seat. We'll keep him there till things cool off. And get him there fast. This disturbance is following a regular pattern. It starts with rumors, incidents, leads to beatings, terrible violence. Ben, the situation's getting out of hand. My office has been swamped with telephone calls. These people are on my neck. They want action. Get more help if necessary. Deputize as many men as you need. It's gone beyond that now, Jim. We need the state militia. Militia? That's going to extremes. It would mean martial law. What about your own force? You've certainly got enough men and equipment. These aren't just street fights. We're heading for a race riot. Race riot? I agree with Mr. Kellogg. I don't, Doctor. Calling in the militia would cause a breach in this town that could never be healed. By deputizing more citizens, both Negro and white, we can control this situation. Of course we can. We've never had any serious racial trouble in this town. Negroes and whites have been living together in complete harmony for years. I think the sheriff's exaggerating the whole thing. Jim, stop making a political debate of this. Get on the phone, call the governor before it's too late. If Mr. Kellogg can't handle the situation, let's appoint somebody who can. That's all right with me, but while you're making up your mind, the mayor better get on that phone before this town blows up in your faces. If we need help, let's get it. Martial law would mean suspension of local authority. We don't want that. All right, all right, take it easy. Arguing among ourselves isn't going to get us anywhere. Has any of you ever seen a race riot? I have. I saw a whole town go mad, a town very much like this. I saw my own father's body tied to a car and dragged through the streets. And the driver of that car was a man my father had known for 20 years. I saw a white child beaten to death by my own people. She was just about the age of your daughter, Mr. Lobo. Oh, you can't believe it unless you see it with your own eyes. It happens fast, just like this is happening, and then suddenly it turns into mob violence. And once it grows into mob violence, it's a shocking, frightening spectacle. Decent people go suddenly insane. There is no reasoning, no feeling of guilt, just hysteria. A wild, uncontrollable hysteria. And then the fear, the terror of helpless victims something you can never forget as long as you live. Put through a call to the state capitol. Get me the governor. Then, do your best until the troops get here. Now, here's the way I figure it. The sheriff might not admit it, but there's been three white men killed already. Now, if you want my advice... Just I'll what is your advice, Gleason? Well, a man's got a right to his own feelings. Why don't you go home and keep your feelings to yourself? Come on, everybody. George Hansen's got no reason to lie about it. He said this woman was so cut up they had to rush her to hospital. All right, let's break it up. All right, break it up. I said, break it up!
if this thing keeps up, we got to drive these niggers out of town. Hey, fellas, they burned down one of Packard's buildings. Get over there and he'll tell you what to do. Hey! Hey! Pass the word along, we're meeting at Sam Packard's place! What about this one? We'll get around to him later. We'll get them all. Packard's gonna make them all wish they'd never come to town. Don't listen to him. He'll get you all killed. Go home to your families. Don't listen to him. Hurry up and bring something handy. We're gonna do this right. We'll be back for him later. The fools. The crazy, stupid fools. I'd better get going, Casey. Come on, I'll drive you home. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Looting at Horn and Bixel Streets. Fred, you take it. Mark, you'd better go down and give him some help. We're going to quarantine the west end of the town. Three of you men and a regular deputy will travel in each car. Lock off all streets. Allow no one to enter or leave this area. Ben! Yeah? Mickey! Yeah, Mickey? Ben! Ben, I think I'm running into trouble. Some Negro spotted Clark Packard in the car with me. Two cars are following us. I can't shake them. Where are you now? On the main highway, about a mile out of town. Better come on back. I think I can give him the slip once I hit the turnpike. No, Mickey, don't take any chances. Cut over to Washington Boulevard and come back in. Right. Casey, you shouldn't be out on the streets. Get over to Sam Packard's place. There's a mob collecting. Uh, call in all the boys. Frank, take her home. I'll be all right. Take her home and stay there. All units, attention. All units, listen carefully. Come on in. Come on in. All units. <laughs> people that didn't burn your building down. They're going to get hurt, too. I've been beaten and humiliated. What do you expect me to do? Wait until they spit on me? I've put my life into this town. This is my town. I helped build it with my own hands. That doesn't give you the right to destroy it. I'd rather destroy it than let those dirty black devils take it over. Sam, you're talking like a maniac. Stop and think before it's too late. I've done plenty of thinking. We all have. We're going to drive every last one of them out of this town. If you try it, I've got to stop you. I'm going to drive them out, even if I have to kill every mother's son of them. All right, Kellogg. You've said your little piece. Not quite, Wiley. I've got my belly full of all of you. And I'm not taking any more. I'm warning you. Every one of you. You just try it, and I'll shoot you down like a pack of mad dogs. We'll be waiting for them. For every one of us, there's going to be two dead old face. Two for one. And don't you try to stop us. A white man killed my baby. They tried to sneak him out of town. He's right. Two for one. I'm not here to stop you. 
I've got as much hate in me as a man can have. <laughs> Come on in. Ben's on his way now. Okay. Where the devil is Kellogg? I thought you told me he was on his way back here. He should be here any minute. He's got to know we're having difficulty getting the militia. Mr. Mayor, I can't take a chance sending that information out on the radio. Yes, yes, I know. But I wish he'd get here. Brother, it's enough to give you the creeps outside. You feel like you're sitting on a stick of dynamite and you don't know what somebody's going to light the fuse. All units, attention, all units, repeat. Come on in. Get back as fast as you can, boys. Ben, the troops can't get here for at least two hours. Two hours? I told the governor how desperate the situation is, but it's physically impossible to get the militia here any sooner. That's just fine. You know what can happen to this town in two hours? They'll tear it apart. They'll rip it apart piece by piece. You've got to stop it, Ben. You've got to. I've got to stop it. Tell me how, will you? Just tell me how I can stop Packard and that wild mob with a handful of deputies. I don't know, Ben, but we've got to try. We've got to do something. Yeah. Frank, get out the riot guns. Run into a roadblock. They almost got him. Yeah, it was a nice even fight, Sheriff. Why didn't you tie my feet, too? I grabbed him before I could unlock the cuffs. Try to get my gun. I had my hands full. Put him back in the cell. Let's go, Packer. Oh, Mr. Kellogg. I don't think I can use this. You'll get instructions. Oh, no, no, that isn't what I meant. Uh, those men, that crowd out at Packard's place. Why, some of them are my friends, neighbors. Anybody else feel that way? I couldn't do it, Sheriff. I just couldn't. It's just too bad about you. Now, let's get this straight. You're not doing me any favors, you're doing this for yourselves. There are women and children in this town. Some of them your wives and your children. When this thing breaks, life is going to be awful cheap. Nobody's walking away from this because I need 50 for every one of you. I'd like to walk out of it, too. But if I'm in it, you're in it with me. Again, Mrs. Crawford. Carolyn. Carolyn, this is Mommy. Can you hear me, Carolyn? 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 Can you hear me, honey? This is Daddy, Carolyn. Can you hear me? A little louder this time. Carolyn? Can you hear me, Carolyn? This is Mommy. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Carolyn? This is Mommy. 
tell me, darling. Carolyn, Carolyn, can you hear me, Carolyn? All right, Mrs. Crawford. Carolyn! Carolyn! Can you hear me, Carolyn? This is Mommy. This is Mommy, dear. Can you hear me, Carolyn? I hear something. <laughs> Try it again. Carolyn! Carolyn! Can you hear me, Carolyn? This is Mommy. Answer me, Carolyn. Please answer me. Carolyn! Are you hurt? Are you hurt, Carolyn? Answer me, Carolyn. Are you hurt? Mommy! I fell down. Give me a rope. Try to explain to her. Tell her to tie it around her waist. Carolyn? Carolyn? Can you hear me? This is Daddy. I fell down, Mommy. Listen to me, Carolyn. Can you hear me? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm dropping you a long rope. Try to tie it around your waist. Can you hear me? Tie it around your waist. Mommy? The rope, honey. Tie the rope around your waist. Do you understand, Carolyn? Around your waist. these township records are. The well was sunk 30 years ago. According to this old blueprint, it was dug to a depth of 150 feet and then abandoned. It took about 63 feet of rope to reach her, so she must be about here. The well must be clogged with debris below that point. There's no water in the well because the rope came up dry. But then we'll go down to 63 feet, cut a tunnel across. So how long will it take? Well, it depends on what kind of ground we hit. Well, we're going to need plenty of lumber. We're going to have to shore up every six feet to stop cave in. I'll get you all the lumber you need.
in any danger of suffocation, Doctor. The fact that she's alive indicates she's in a position to breathe. But how long can she stay alive? Well, that's hard to say, Mr. Peabody. We don't know how badly she was injured in the fall. Dropped 83 degrees. Keep pumping in that cool air. I doubt if a child her age can survive. The shock alone could kill her. It would help her chances if you went into a faint or a coma. Can you hear anything? I heard her cry some time ago. I haven't heard anything since. Some more lanterns over here. Packets here. Yeah, it's rock, all right. I think I hear. It. Cut that engine. <laughs> Far down is she? A little over sixty feet. You'll never get to her in time this way. We've got to sink a shaft. Got the cable tool rig and some uh, some twenty-six inch casings, about eighty feet of them. You better bring the big scow. Right. You better bring that big cable crane, too. Okay. We'll sink it about here. We've got to have more light. There aren't any generators in town. I'm having a power line strung in. We can't wait for that. Come on, you guys. Give me a hand. We need your help, folks. All of you who have cars, please drive them to the edge of this road. Park them with their headlights facing towards me. Turn on the lights and keep your engines running so the batteries won't burn down. Please do this as quick as possible. Thank you. This is going to take some time. Wouldn't you like to go home and rest for a little while? I'll call you when something happens. She'll be all right, Casey. I have my car here. I could drive you in. Thanks. We'll be all right.
squeeze it back a little more. All it. That's it. All right, put those jacks in and level the rig. And get those dump boards in. Hurry it up. It's a long way down there, boss. Yeah, I know. Pour the cable and hook on that big skull. Looks we won't need those troops after all, Jim. No, I've already noticed. Take it up. Get that water hose over here. Sunk a parallel shaft, 
We'll be down to her level in less than an hour. Here's your stuff. Keys, wallet containing $58, your wristwatch, 39 cents in coins, your suitcase, and it's all there. Your sign this receipt. We're fighting time. The shaft will be finished in less than an hour. Then we'll have to tunnel across to her. We can do it ourselves, but we could get to her much faster with an experienced man. You've worked on tunnel jobs and mines. She's five years old, Claude. She's trapped in the pipe. I'm going to do just as you told me. I'm getting out of here as fast as I can. I hate this town and everybody in it. I want to forget I ever saw it, or you, or him, or anything about it. Park Clay down here. We can tunnel right away. We don't need any timbers. Good. I hope our luck holds out. I hope so, too. About seven feet from the shaft of the well pipe, we can go across here. We'll need headroom. Draw up the casings about four feet. That'll give you more room to work with. There'll only be space down there for one man to work at first. I'll start it. Good. Still alive? We don't know. How far down have you gone? All the way. We're ready to begin tunneling. You'd better dig a six foot cavern at the bottom of the shaft. It'll put you six feet below the kid. You can tunnel up to where she is. If you hit water, it'll run back here, away from her. There's no sign of water down there. Uh, Clay's tricky stuff. I've seen water break through it without a warning. Okay, that's the way we'll do it. Sam. Maybe I'd better go. I want to have a look at that formation. Gaines! Give me your harness, Gaines. Quigley, you got that throat mic hooked up? Sure, it's okay. Let us know how it's going, or if you run into any trouble. Take it up the middle bit.
men, you better have them turn off their car motors. Right, have them cut the motors. Attention, everybody. Would you please shut off your car motors, but keep your headlights burning. How does it look? Not so good. Water's coming in. How fast? Four, maybe five gallons a minute. Can we keep going? Not a chance. It's up to my knees already. You better pull me up. Get that auxiliary pump over here. Bring him up. How long will it take to pump it out? Mm, there's no way of telling. Maybe hours. since I took over, Ben. That was a couple of hours ago. What do you think of her chances, Doc? A baby down there in that darkness? She's been down there a long time, Mr. Kellogg. The will of a greater power than ours will decide. Okay! Hold it! Attention, please. Will you turn off your car motors again, please? Easy. A little slower. Hold it. That's good. How does it look? Not too bad. The water's all pumped out. Too much mud here. We'll have to clear it out. Sandstone, it's loose. Okay. Hand me the pick. Watch it. That wall's gone. Get back, Wiley. Get back. Look out! Wiley! Wiley! Cave in! Cave in! He's caught! I need help! Come on, come on, get down here, will you? I need help! Come on, Bill. Take him right on down now. Come on, Bill. Right on down. Easy now. Oh, yeah. 
Have you? All right, we've got it. Come on. Get it down to him fast. That roof's going to fall in any minute. Come on up. Hurry up. Send down a saw. Get up here, Claude. We'll shore it up first. Get in that bucket. Send down a saw, will you? There's water coming in again. Make him come up. It's my child's life, but make him come up. Are you going to send down a saw or do I have to break this pipe apart with my hand? You'll need help. Bring up that bucket. Where's that pneumatic saw? James is coming down with it. He's going to stay down. Right, get that ambulance over here. They're going to cut through the pipe. Back it up to the shaft.
our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Alive. She's going to be all right. 